Greetings, everyone. I am very excited to again be in conversation with my friend, Rory Duff, who is an amazing geobiologist, leading pioneer in his understanding of the earth energies and earth ley lines, author of some amazing books, which I will list below, and really uh, an amazing pioneer in guiding group meditations to be supporting us in working with these earth energies and integrating the profound shifts that we're in in this time. So thank you for being here, Rory. Thank you, Heather. It's my, it's my honor. Thank you very much. I just have so much respect for you both professionally and personally, Rory, and for this incredible work that you're doing in helping us know how to work with these earth energies to be supporting our shifts into higher consciousness. So if you can update us on some of what your research is showing about what's happening with the earth energy lines as we're now being bombarded by these increasing solar and cosmic energies. Gosh, yes, <laughs> that's that's quite a question. Um, and, and I have to say at the outset that, that it's just curiosity. I've been I'm curious about so many things. It's got me into heaps of trouble, and and and, and that's what drives me to find out more. And, and um, it, it's it's a it, it's that which makes pioneers. I think we we just want to know more about the truth, and uh, and that keeps us investigating. And and what what keeps me still going now is that we still don't know enough. There's so much more to learn, and uh, and and this journey into to to group work was realizing that the individual perspective of looking at things like this so the subject as big as this was just nothing like good enough you have to do it collectively and and that then leads on to this, this collective uh, experience of what we're what we're heading for now which which we'll, we'll touch on later but uh, uh, it's driven by observations we have to make just what's going on and just uh, find out what's there and and keep monitoring it and seeing what's changing so uh every time i have a chance i will i'll get my my rods out to just look at see what's going on with the energy lines and um, these things move hourly so you you need to, to be on your toes with it um but when i first started measuring the, the really one significant alignment with its two energy lines the michael alignment the St. michael and mary lines they were about 30 paces wide and they had about a, a, a 30% movement from one of their width to one side and the other side over a 12-hour one-way, 12-hour the other way. So it had a 24-hour frequency. But the, the width was something which stayed stable for years till about 2017 when it just literally doubled in width mm. up to around 60, 65 paces. Since then, we've had these extra increases in width. And... Uh, from December the solstice last year, we had a slight increase. It was it was it was small, but then we had another one at the end of January and February, which really came with a wave uh, of, of energy, which a lot of people felt. You, know, you, 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 you people listening to this will, will perhaps remember times just recently when you, you've been tired for no particular reason. You've had to just sit down and chill. and you, It's almost like you've had a long workout and, and, and you're exhausted, but you haven't got a reason. It's your, just your body responding to these energies. Well, well back in the, the, the end of January, we had uh, another big shift in, in the, the width of these lines. And um, that, that moved us up to uh, over 100 paces wide now, 105 paces we've been finding for the for these type four lines um which is really significant um and you have to start thinking well why have they suddenly widened and what what's happened with the source energy that's done this is it a sort of a lensing thing is it something else that's happened well it, that led to a bit more investigation and obviously if you've got lines widening as well by the way and all the lines are widening and and i should re remind viewers that the a line is the high pressure concentration within the field so you have the, the low pressure field everywhere so you've got the widening aspect of it in high pressure so if you extrapolate this further and if it carries on with all the lines we've got widening as well the smaller ones too it won't be long before everywhere is high pressure of one line or not or another 
there won't be areas you can escape, which interestingly has a bit of a problem we might come to in itself. But uh, so that was the first thing. And I, I, got, I got on the email to a few people I know that regularly map these lines and, and check them. And um, uh, various friends came back, uh, Gary M. Vasey from Chechia, who's, who's mapping the, uh, the type four lines across the whole of uh, Chechia, uh, doing a, an amazing job going through ancient mm -hmm. uh, churches and, and sites. Fascinating if you, were, if you wanted to watch his videos. Uh, yeah, he, he he immediately said, "Goodness, what's happening?" He's just shot up it, it's up to 105 paces. So we got confirmation from him and a few others uh, that this has happened. But something else had happened as well, and and um, this this is something I'd, I'd come across about two years ago with the the larger Type Five Emperor dragons. And what we discovered is that these had really boosted in their wits, but in, an, in a way which wasn't actually uniform. Sometimes they were like, you know, they're over a mile in width now, but some people are finding them more than that. Some people find them that maybe there's about half a, half a kilometer width, which is huge as it is. And when I first when we first came across the Emperor Dragons, they were 50 paces wide. Mm. That was it. And in 2017, they doubled to, to 100 paces. So now they're, they're over a mile wide. But they weren't in all these different places the same. And uh, what, what was discovered is not long ago, they end up, you end up finding shadow lines. Uh, and I've, I've had several people now recently uh, come up and, and say, have you looked at the level four lines, type four lines? Because they look like they've got shadow lines. And, and, and yes, it was something we we discovered recently uh, with this huge shift since uh, since December. So I'll come back to, to the type four ones. But, but the, initially, the type five ones uh, had huge shadow lines either side of the Emperor Dragon lines. Now, that's that's massive and we started looking at well how could this possibly be the case um and yet we do have something which in dowsing we know about and that is uh, through water dowsing and dowsing water channels and people have been dowsing for water for years that's how i began i was taught by an italian geologist uh, when i was over in africa and we did it for farmers um, but what happens is you can determine the depth of the channel of water um, by walking away from where you find it above it. So if the water's down here and you've doused it just here, if you walk to the side like this, you'll pick up the shadow channel. Actually, you'll pick it up both sides. So there'll be, there's the main channel, but you pick it up here and you'll pick it up there. And the distance between where you find it when you're directly above it and the distance to where you find the shadow channel is proportional to the depth of the water. So if, if this was much more shallower, for instance, you'd have to walk only a short distance to find it. If it was much deeper, you'd have to walk a much further to find that it, it's, it's deeper. Uh, and that's all likely to be explained through vibrations. And 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 uh, uh, thinking with these these lines as they are spherical standing waves of very low frequency vibrations which emanate out from the center of the Earth. And they bounce back off all these different density contrasts, including the surface to air density on the surface. And with these constant vibrations going backwards and forwards, you'll find that the, the lines hit, hit the surface, bounce back, and then bounce back off a density contrast back up to the surface again, causing the shadow lines. To a geophysicist, this isn't, this isn't new at all because we use seismic surveys just to do exactly the same thing. And, and, and we very large machines which uh, uh, vibrate the ground and along the lines of geophones. Uh, so you have a vibration here and they, they send vibrations down and they bounce them back up and they pick up where the vibrations are on the geophones. But by that way, you build up a whole picture of the different density contrasts underneath the ground, which is how you find ore and metals and, and, and things like that. So it would appear that the same me mechanism is working with these very, very low frequency vibrations and, and uh, they're showing because the intensity is there and it wasn't before so another reason this extra intensity these lines were picking up probably we didn't pick them up before because we weren't sensitive enough to the to the but now they're, they're more intense we're, we're more easily picking them up so you're, saying they're both, could, so you're saying they're both widening and intensifying they're widening 
and they're producing shadow lines. Yeah. Um, but And depending on where the bouncing back is, you'll find the shadow lines are much further away. But of course, if your density contrast is very close to the surface, and, and so you've got a, a bit of normal sediment, and then suddenly you've got some granite under here. Well, your your shadow lines are going to overlap with the main line. Ah, uh, that makes sense. And that's why it suddenly got a lot wider than more before. Um, it's made mapping a lot more complicated because you really have to be be, be clued into what the center of which line. But but the beauty of it is if you can meditate on the on the shadow line, it'll affect you just as much as as the main central line. So we've got another mechanism where the, where the Earth is flooding us with much more of this high pressure vibration, which will be much more sensitive to. So there's there's a sense that uh, of awakening of the of the planet and the Earth in, in that sense as well, um, and it's having a bigger effect on us. Um, what we've always known about these energies is that when you live on them they accentuate your emotions so if you're feeling good you'll feel very good if you're feeling not so good then you'll feel worse you know, you, you know whatever you've got in, in a particular negative emotion that will be amplified so you so can imagine you, if the world sorry do you so do you see that as part of the polarization that we're seeing on the planet that it's really amplifying whatever people are dealing with so that it's it's intensifying their experience it's i'm not sure about all experiences but definitely emotions so you're going to get people reacting emotionally negatively more vigorously more vociferously uh, and and that would lead to more antagonistic di di diversiveness amongst people amongst families amongst political groups so, so yes in that sense the, we'll experience the reaction of it but it will be down to you know where we used to have a discussion with with a laugh between two people now it it's got really serious it's like you know you, if you don't hold that same view as me then you're the enemy you know there's no there's no middle ground it's it's complete division and that is going to get more uh, more and more of an issue unless we deal with it and, and that that leads us on to another interesting aspect was what we're beginning to learn from from the meditation on these energies um and and as we're led to things we, we have to be reminded that these energies are sim symbolized in in literature all around the world in stories as, as, as serpents and dragons mm. and the the clearest lots of cultures will talk about the nodes the sacred sites as distant learning centers and these are places where we, we learn and, and we're taught even in, in the gnostic uh, version of the garden of eden um the story there with the with the, uh, the tree of knowledge the tree of, of life really uh, with the serpent the serpent's known as the instructor the, the teacher so meditating individually or in groups on these sacred sites where there are these huge combinations of, of energies is where we get taught. It's, it's like our distant learning. Which, uh, uh, and um, so if you're on this, this journey of, of understanding what's going on and you meditate with groups of people, what you can find out quite quickly through shared experiences what you're all being guided to learn towards. And, and initially... Uh, in, in the early years it was like oh goodness you, you had the same visions and feelings as i did and, and you and people would be sharing what came through in their meditations and people saying but well, i got the same thing and i got the same thing and you think well how could you look at them I and the probability of that is just out of the question but, but especially when some of these things are happening um quite quite unbelievable similarities so there's something something was going on a few years ago and was something was building um and last year it was very much about purification and the need to purify through water and then purification through fire, which, which we could perhaps return to. But but more recently, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's seemingly helping us understand the divisiveness that we're going through and how we deal with this. Uh, and again, through the last winter solstice uh, meditations um, that, that I'm aware of, and there were several up on, on major energy lines in the UK and elsewhere, uh, the groups ind independently of each other were guided to, to really focus on peace and certainly peace out into the world. And 
when we got to the sites, it was like very clear we weren't we weren't going to be given peace. <laughs> it, it, it was really windy. It was turbulent, grey skies, and, and, and uh, you know, no sun at all. Noisy in some places, and we were buffeted by the wind. And uh, anyway, it was it was a good idea because of all the issues in the world, and for instance, of the horrible genocide over in, in, in the Middle East at the moment. But um, so we set about holding this thought of peace within us, and, and within a, a few minutes. The, the sun began to appear. Okay, it's just like oh my, and this was like the meteorological offices around around Britain. Anyway, they, they get it wrong most of the time, but it looked like they were going to get it right this time with with all the turbulence. And then it, it went again, and then after an hour of meditating, we really come together coherently as a group, holding peace within us. I, I, I promise you not. This was just blue skies all around, sun and. New turbulence. Even the passing car, car, cars were, were were seemingly silent, and the same thing was reported all throughout the other groups that I, that I, I come across. It was like, well, there's there's a precedent for this that exists, and and the ancient tribes and cultures would laugh at us because they they do this all the time. I, mean, I, I mentioned the Hopi before, um, and and. and we know that that water and rain was so important to many tribes around the world, and and it began to dawn on us well that, that there are people who can bring about rain when they need to, and they they have ways of doing this. And people say, "Oh, you pray for rain, and you get rain." And I, I begin to think, well, actually, I don't think that might be the case. What what you're doing is you're holding that which needs balance mm. so if you're holding within that which you would wish to see balanced without you if you're in arid conditions your crops are dying through not raining it's been a season which hasn't worked there's an imbalance in the environment by holding that balance within you bring rain to bring back that balance so if you're holding peace within and around all that turbulence you're bringing back that balance even to the extent that you're externally affecting the environment, like the rain or, or like the sunlight and, and then the and the cloud cover. So if this is the I case, add something sorry. That, Rory, that yeah. is such a, that is so powerful and it fits that ancient hermetic principle as it is within us, so it is outside of us. But it's you're really describing how these energies can support us in healing and moving into this higher consciousness and creating this morphogenic field then that can be healing to the world around us and emanate mm -hmm. out from us. I mean, this is powerful work that you're doing with these groups. Well, no, I, I mean, I'm just learning from them, but, it, but it's, it's funny, but you see, they're not going to give us what we need. They're going to give us the conditions so that we can bring about what we need. Mm. So, so they, they gave us the turbulence in order to bring peace. They're going to give us... And, and, and of course, this is the next thing where, where it's all heading is we suspect now that in March on the 19th on the spring equinox, and how many times starts just before uh, the, the equinox on the 20th, they're going to give us despair mm. in some way. We will feel like there's no hope. I hope not, but, <laughs> but, but that will give us a chance to bring forth positive expectation to balance out that. So we can hold positive expectation within us. And, and and you'll think, well, how would you do that? But the signs are all there of how we do that. You know, you you you, you look at why labyrinths are, are, are so so closely associated with uh, with um, sacred sites and Native American Indian tapuats. They're, they're same sort of single lines where you walk the final part of the pilgrimage trail. And and you don't get to the center. You don't quite get there. You don't quite get there. There's a sense of building expectation. And that building positive expectation of something wonderful happening in the middle is exactly that internal butterflies in your stomach before the start of a race type feeling. And you, you can get that just sitting waiting for the sun to rise. So that that's something you can do. You can get that with with a, a drum beat that slowly beats faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until you know the time is to start. So you build that form of expectation within you as well as holding that peace within you and that balance. And and you will feel that the 
the group effect is to dispel, dis dispel fear, but to dispel um, di uh, despair. Mm. And I suspect the same thing again will happen in, in, in the summer. Uh, and, and by the way, hope is a perfect thing for spring because hope springs eternal. <laughs> and yes, it's where new shoots of life grow. Everyone is hopeful. Yes. But of course, then you have the summer when you've got the harvest time and then the fruits of, 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 of joy. Uh, everyone's happy. So you're going to be, te is your joy going to be tested? Mm. And uh, yeah, we're not going to be given joy. We're going to be given sadness. And that sadness, for whatever reason, will make us have to go within to bring balance, to balance out that sadness with internal joy. So we'll have to find a, a way of, of, of bringing that about. Uh, and again, in, in uh, autumn, uh, the uh, autumn equinox, we're going to be probably having to put together a form of self-esteem, confidence, belief in ourselves, what we're doing to combat the, the fear that's going to be generated, uh, probably in the lead up to uh, some horrendous political decisions made by by people who really aren't on the side of, 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 the, of the mainstream population in the world. But we're going to be given that chance, that choice. So it sounds like this is really our process of healing and coming into wholeness. How do we find that place of centeredness within us? How do we integrate the polarities to be in that place of centeredness and love and peace and hope? So it's really challenging us to strengthen that within ourselves and then to emanate that. But it sounds like from what you're saying that not only the earth lines are intensifying, but the harmony periods are lengthening so that we're getting yeah. this help from the earth energies and the cosmic energies to help us in this accelerated process of healing and integration. It, it, it's all about the same educational process. It's preparing us for what's coming, which which Steiner and many others in the prophecies talk about evolution of consciousness, which 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 is huge. But, but, but I, I do need to mention that what we're being taught is that polarity doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. it, there aren't opposites. And, and people think, well, you've got hot and cold, you've got light and dark. No, that's the illusion that the Hegelian dialectic want to use to divide us. And and, and the whole divide and conquer is, is how the few can control the many. It's like the old, the old saying of the king on the mountain, and he sees all his, all his men... Uh, are below him wanting to wanting to attack him and, and 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 his advisor says no the trick is not to fight them it's to get them to fight each other so, so they're, they're busy trying to get us to fight each other when when and, and think that the two different sides when, when actually they're the same aspects of the same thing if you think of them as two aspects of the same thing you can bring them together mm. if you think of them as opposites they'll never come together yeah, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the principle of polarity was I think uh, uh, purposely designed to, to change that and, and Jung and when you look at his, his red book and, and, and read read that you, you see how he is mercilessly not attacked, but he's mercilessly ridiculed for ages on his need to keep this concept of, of, of opposites, which is integral to his theory of the archetypes. Uh, and, and eventually, I, mean, I might have mentioned before, I can't tell too many people this, but eventually he, he relents and he says, I see what you mean, but I find it boring. <laughs> this is too many, it took a whole lifetime before he, he recognized that actually there, there aren't opposites. There, there, there's two aspects of the same thing. And if we can get over that, we can bring those aspects together. So you, you can take, a, you can take a, a love and hate as, as uh, degrees of heart-centeredness. And how mm -hmm. heart-centered can we be? And how less heart-centered? Yes, so if you, if you have no heart-centeredness at all, you, you, you're pretty much in that in, in that hate environment of disliking everybody, and or if you're in heart centeredness, then th th there's a oneness in there, which is just that you're all you're left with in oneness is that love. So that that, that they are the as that the aspect of both. Um, so when you recognise that, you can bring that all together into oneness and into balance. Um, and coming back to to this this harmony time, 
again, it stems back from 2017 when, when the fourth emperor dragon suddenly appeared. The harmony times had been under a day for, for years, and they suddenly leapt to one and a half days. And now um, they're over 40 days long. And mm. you can extrapolate this. Uh, in, in the summer, it's going to be about 65 days long harmony time. By the end of the year, the winter solstice, we're moving into uh, a period where there is no gaps. All year round will be the same frequency. That's all the energy lines will be vibrating from side to side at the same frequency or pumping out of the side. It's almost as like something something has come along and dominated all the frequencies. Like no other sound, no other vibration can exist because it's overriding them, uh, and, um, which I think is the, the inner core and the function of the inner core which is which is doing this because of this, these galactic sources of energy that are coming through so we're, we're going to have this all year round harmony time and that in itself is going to make it easier for us to learn because the all the nodes will be singing will be, will be buzzing and so we can go there anytime and there'll be the, the double torus shape which can if you if you if you learn to do this right the right way and we're still learning we can we can hold our own double uh, our own double torus or torus shape of energy in resonance with the energies of the uh, that we find at these nodes um i suspect with that is the point when greater clarification for for instruction will be coming through um and our learning period will will speed up no end so you know it will be prepared yeah that's what's incredible is that the timing of that correlates with Pluto's movement fully into Aquarius, which I see as a threshold taking us into the Aquarian age. And from the Hindu Yuga cycle, the end of the Kali Yuga. So it, it sounds like this shift at the end of 2024 into 2025 is going to be profound in helping us cross that threshold into higher consciousness. But we need to do the purification and healing at these critical solstice and equinox times to lead up in preparation to that. Yeah, um, it, it, it's interesting how we're being taught because we, we, we've we been taught about purification. I remember the autumn one last year when uh, we, we were meditating up at uh, Oliver's Castle in, in Wiltshire and, and uh, we, we really got wi windswept and rained on and and the sun came down and it was like we were completely uh, drenched in, in everything it was it was it was real baptism of water and fire mm -hmm. uh, and and the theme very much was purification on, on a in, in individual physical and, and emotional basis basis and, and 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 since then you you've noticed the people who are sensitive to these things they're aren't the addictions there aren't the habits that, that used to be there the, the the taste for certain drinks you might prefer goes the the need to to have certain types of food goes uh, and that's just the physical way but but uh, then you'll find that you you'd stop enjoying things which you used to enjoy because actually they weren't good for your heart you know just mm -hmm. seeing this incessant violence on, on films and things like that or, or or other forms of aggression from one person to another you know this is this is now mirroring this uh, uh sufi principle of protecting your heart you know uh, of ensuring that uh, that your heart isn't affected by by its negativity so it's affecting us all emotionally so the purification has come in and we have to keep learning that and learning more as we as we as we further in our, our journey towards group meditation and connecting with these energies and we we're about 20 percent in understanding and that's probably you know an over optimistic percentage but for me the next five years is going to be i think the, the, the way we really learn how to to, to do group meditation uh, and how we interact with the energies at nodes in intuitive movements and uh, resonance um, and, and the prophecies are, are helping us with this in every every single way, which is beautiful. Um, but, but no one person is going to be given the answers either. But that's the other great thing. It's it's like uh, you know w the groups around the world will be given answers, and when they share that that sharing with other groups, then then we will learn what we're supposed to learn. And um, 
the beauty of that is it's like the grand designer has protected us protected the wrong people if, if we don't come together and ever get over our differences we're never going to to go through this evolution but, um, well and it's so it's fit, it so fits with the paradigms of the aquarian age of our diversity but coming back into community and into that collaboration together you know and as the hopis would say we are the ones we've been waiting for we need to be taking responsibility to do this work but it's profound how do you yeah. see the ancient prophecies and rudolf steiner's work speaking to what this time of transformation is about because you and i have talked about how 12,000 years ago when we were going through the galactic sheet and this profound time of shift, it led to cataclysmic earth changes and a reset for humanity. And it, my understanding of your sense of the ancient prophecies and Steiner's work about this time is that this is actually a call to move into this evolutionary leap in consciousness. Yeah. Uh, this is a tricky one, but thank you for mentioning this because uh, it's been a while in, in beginning to understand how and what Steiner was doing. I mean, if you even begin to look into Steiner, it's going to take a lifetime to, to try to catch up with what he's done. So you, you, if you sort of wait to be gift, gifted uh, information, it, it's kind of helpful. And I, I, I was fortunate to be gifted a little bit uh, on the evolution of consciousness. And in particular, he thinks we're about to move from the fifth epoch to the sixth epoch. And I know there's there's different words and other people use, like you mentioned, the Yugas and, 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 and all things like that. But we're going to go through a transition without a shadow of doubt. He was fairly sure it was was going to be uh, around about now, actually, you know, more than 100 years after his lifetime. Um, and he talked about the traits that we're going to find in in. in in this sixth epoch and how we're going to prepare. And as you said earlier, the uh, the um, Aquarian age comes with a completely new set of rules and learning points. And, and, and Steiner was talking about how all through the different constellations, we have to learn in that energetic environment at that time. Um, and the, the cycle or karmic cycle of birth and rebirth is because we need to experience all these different energetic frequencies and the challenges which we face in each of them and you and you can you can look back at the challenges mankind have had and he, he highlights a few in in, in his uh, his epochs that he talks about but uh, his epochs weren't quite the same as other epochs other yoga cycles we have we have uh, uh, a very interesting thing here we have cycles which are regular and predictable and then we have the irregular chaotic moments and i'll come back to that in a moment but but essentially um what what i want to mention is that we're going into a new cycle which has got new challenges and as you mentioned the aquarian uh, spirit uh has in opposition to that counterparting that is the leo uh, and and uh, in every single constellation you have to find the balance again between the, the very airy type of free environment which we're going to find ourselves in with some degree of control that we need which is balanced out by the learning learning side the sort of controlling leader type role and and the balance that we're going to be now looking for is well <laughs> just there's one very clear a group of people that would like to be that that uh, that group in control the cabal that, who want the new world order running the whole world or is it going to be something which is uh, more uh, of a positive-led leader through groups and independent communities that can lead us and navigate us through what could be in a massively expansive, free-thinking Aquarian age, but without grounding, we're going to lose it. And, and uh, th th this is this is the moment where we are looking to take a decision of how we wish to go forward into this next two and a half thousand years. Uh, and stepping up to to be able to be uh, one of the thousands of leaders that will be needed will be those who make the choice to 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 go heart centered to go down the purification route uh, so that we we can uh, take advantages of, of these things that are coming so this is this whole decision uh, and, and that is facing us because we're in a planet of choice is is he just that one going into this new set of challenges i think but just come back to 
to Steiner, which was what we've, we've really begun to, 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 to understand a bit more of, is that epochs in his geology are not set time limits. Epochs have just a period of time which is identifiable by parameters for what changes one epoch to another epoch. So it could be a thousand years long, it could be 700 years long, it could be 2000 years long. And Steiner's epochs aren't a specified length either. And he talks about the uh, original Atlantean age, which was like the golden age, and then the first epoch with the, Rish, the holy rishis and, and, and the, the, when the Vedas came along, and then you've got the, the second, the third, and now the fourth epoch. Uh, and so when you start looking at why he chooses one epoch to another epoch, he, he links it to the uh, streams of energy that he comes across. And he talks about the Michael stream, the, the Sibelian stream, the Arthurian stream, and, and the old uh, Hebrew stream. And, and it looks as though um, there are differences in consciousness in, in a way which uh, he recognized that certain types of people who could achieve things would come along. And around about the time of Jesus, and, and, and there, were, there was you know, several you know, amazing people that were able to, to do certain things, um, which... Uh, he would say that he, there was a stream of consciousness that, that was around on the earth at that time that allowed this. And um, what what we, what we can see now is that if you've got this irregular time period in amidst these cycles, you've got an, a, another external influence on all these energies that are coming through into the planet. And, and, and the original thinking was, well, you've got this original cosmic energy coming from, from space, which is shielded by our, our interstellar magnetic fields, by our strong magnetic field of the Earth and the sun's magnetic field. So when you've got strong fields, the cosmic energy can't get through, and therefore you can't get energy coming to the near core and, and be coming out as uh, uh, ultra low vibrations. And this is cyclical because it, we've, we've got seasons, we've got uh, rotations around the, around the, the sun and, and, and also the solar system. And... and uh, and through through the the galaxy, so everything's quite predictable as it should be. But what's not predictable is the, the solar system's passageway through space uh, encountering interstellar magnetic fields. Mm. And so you're going to get on top of that suddenly regions of space where there's no excess magnetic field, and then suddenly the cosmic ray is going to suddenly boost, and. Um, that in, that will show us on, on Earth increases and decreases in, is, is in the intensity of the magnetic field. And when the magnetic field is low, you're getting more, more evolutionary uh, effects because more gamma ray rays coming through, and gamma rays come through that causes known evolutionary changes because they mutate cells and kill cells. Down. Yeah, uh, we're going through that, uh, and because our magnetic fields are, are, dropped, are dropped off the scale, pretty much. No one's talking about this. They will not talk about the night of that. They won't talk about the, the real neutrino count that's, that's coming through. Um, and the interesting thing is it's not it's not uniform around the world. You've got a huge magnetic load anomaly over Brazil, so they're getting a massive dose of, of uh, extra gamma ray radiation and cosmic energy, which is which is going to be really boosting the the evolution uh, evolutionary, evolutionary effects uh, over the southern area, America area. So we, we have this um, this extra effect from 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 the the cycles, the natural cycles, like the galactic current sheet comes through every twelve thousand years. But you get the added mm. intensity of where we are in space, going through magnetic fields or not. And I, I, I can't remember we we chatted about this before, but it was to do with a new type of uh, dating that was discovered in, in archaeology recently in the Middle East, and they, and I write about this in my newsletter, so if, if, if I'm not mentioning it exactly right, do read the, my next newsletter. First of March, you can see it on my newsletters on, on, on my website. But it's a, a new form of dating for, for looking at clay bricks and clay tablets in, in uh, Samaria in, in, in the Middle East. And it would appear that, the, that you can now isolate out the magnetic uh, minerals inside these clay bricks. 
and measure the magnetic intensity at the time these bricks were, 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 were formed. Uh, and uh, it, it seems that um, when they did a, a series of them over 5,000 years, that, that there's a period from about 5,000 years ago to two and a half, two, to 3,000 to 1,000, so 3,000 year period over the last five, you have this profile of intensity going up and down and there's a up and down up and down and you can see from 5,000 years ago the intensity is increasing slowly and then around about 2,000 year, years ago it goes down and up and down and up and then we know now which is where they haven't done the dating in the last 1,000 years but you know that that cycle is coming down again so, we, so we've got a gradual increase from the time of the, the holy rishis to a gradual decrease to where we are now. So the holy rishis were in an environment where there was next to no magnetic field, which is why they had so many incredible powers. But around about 2,000 years ago, when you've got these intensities, you've got a trough. And when you've got the trough, you've got the people like John the Baptist and Jesus and, and, and other people coming in doing some amazing things. So there's this, there's little, little points. And of course, these troughs are irregular. So you can see how we, the the over that period when some great civilizational changes were made in the, in the Middle East, you have these little blips where suddenly a lot more cosmic energy gets through, which is evolutionary. And some people back then were able to tap into that, into that lack of intensity to do amazing things. And we, 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 we our archaeologists used that profile to be able to take to the clay tablets that are and clay bricks bricks now you just measure the intensity of, of the magnetism and you can see where, what age is but um i find it interesting because it mirrored when steiner's epochs were changing because yeah, there was suddenly influencing in that particular time that changed the course of, of, of history so with the magnetic field really being very low now you're saying this is an opportunity for that uh, increase in consciousness to really be accelerated well it is it is it's not an opportunity it's happening uh the opportunity is, is what we choose to do right that's exactly. that's the, the opportunity yeah uh, and um, some people will just have to ignore it some people won't, won't be able to handle it in fact look, some people can't handle it right now because it it's it's increasing their awareness and and, and perceptual uh capacity to to points at which they can't comprehend what they're experiencing uh, and Steiner, Steiner says that we will feel things, which uh, which is what other people feel. If they, if if you see somebody in pain, you'll feel pain. If you see yeah. see their hunger, you'll feel their hunger. You know, because our boundaries uh, and, are lessened, so that we're. And I think that is opening us to the possibilities of being telepathic again and increasing yeah. more empathic to what's going yeah. on around us energetically and emotionally but as you're saying we have to learn how to work with that or it can feel yeah. overwhelming 100 uh, percent. and and i'm just mentioned uh, some positive things but you know if you if you, you, you you experience somebody else's anger you could make you feel anger but we're getting there you know, which, the I think, which i think is why what you're doing with the group meditations and i do want to circle back to talk about some of the classes that you have coming up too but i think for me, part of what becomes so important is how we work with those practices like the the indigenous peoples and shamans knew to keep coming back to center to our own inner stillness, to align with the earth and sky, to be you know, able to be in that alignment and not get pulled out of balance by these energies. And to me, that's part of the balance of the Aquarian energy and Leo energy too, because the Aquarian energy is very much about the mind and about how we're working with the influx of these energies. And Leo is about being very much in the heart and being centered yeah. in the heart, which when we can integrate that, then we can stay in balance rather than getting pulled out of balance. Yeah. And, and, and for the, all those reasons, you can't do it on your own. Because you've got nothing to judge it against. It's too chaotic. It's too chaotic. It's too. Uh, it, it's it's like brainstorming when you when you have a group of people brainstorming for new ideas, and uh, you know, nineteen times out of twenty, you come up with complete, absolute balderdash. And yet, that one <laughs> that one innovative idea that comes up, 
is is sheer brilliance. But if you're in that group, if you're in that meditation and you have that sort of fantasy world going on, you can't really judge what these symbols, which ones are more important, which ones aren't. Are, are, are you are you being down going down a red herring? How do you how do you gauge any anything that comes through from your subconscious? But until you work in a group and you begin to share insights and think, oh my goodness, you know, the group has been given, for instance, six or seven aspects of the same message, which you can't see unless you've shared that message and, and realized, oh my goodness. And that is the unbelievable uh, experience that you know you're being guided to do and to learn what you're being gifted. You, 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 you have to learn how to do that. And, and the really challenging thing is you can ask for help. You can ask for, for a certain form of knowledge. But they always give you what you need, not what you want. Uh, yes. yes. So you need to know, you, you need to just act on what you get given, whether it leads to a, a strong learning curve through adversity, which is what they're going to do, part of the purification, or whether you're going to get given something which is actually the next stage of development. And all I would say is that working within a group is so much easier because that shared knowledge helps you realize, it gives you that extra feedback that confirms and consolidates that learning process. And if you think of Kolb's learning cycle, you need that consolidatory reflecting review before you you, you plan your next observation. So yeah, so. I, I would also say, Rory, when I've done uh, sacred circle work over the years, there's a, a, a way... And again, this is something the indigenous people knew, you know, being in that group council format where there's that understanding that we're all attuning to the spirit that's guiding us, the energies of the ley lines that are supporting us. And we each have an element of what's needing to be brought into the wholeness of our understanding and our learning together. So then each person, I mean, there's the resonance of the themes that are coming up as we attune to that spiritual consciousness that's coming through. But each person then has their own fractal aspect of awareness that weaves together to bring more of a whole understanding to everyone in the circle. And weaving is an important word because it implies function. We have to do something. We have to learn something that we have to do. Because weaving the energies is actually an important part of the process. We can't sit back and let this happen to us. We have to engage with it. Yes, yes. This evolution of consciousness is not going to happen to us. It happens through us, which means we have to be involved. And weaving is an absolutely important aspect of learning to weave our energies with the energies of the earth. And, and this is the fascinating thing about, about groups and recognizing how individuals have an individual function that they learn so they can share what they've learned to the others in the group. Uh, and, and we're not way, we, we, we've got glimmers of early understandings. Yes, we get, we get uh, indications from prophecies in wonderful ways, but every single time it's not, you're not going to learn this from a book. You're not going to learn this just from, from, from an insight. You've got to, you've got to work with it and, and um, in, engage with it. And, and, and then you realize, well, goodness, it's, it's it's humankind. We're, we're the last, you know, the last peg, if you like, to be to be put through this because the animal kingdom are there. The earth's ready. We they're just waiting for us to. to yes. uh, the, the spirit guides, you know, as I said before, they're, they're pulling the hair out. <laughs> just break <laughs> up. Just just just. So, so we we can't. Yeah, that that that's what drives me. Apart from the curiosity, but but um, the potential. Uh, yeah. is is so great um and we could do so much uh, and 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 there are places and pockets where people are doing incredible things already yes. um it's, you know, we, we're not i'm not alone in this at all there's there's thousands of people who are working on on what we need to do and know right now but the, the nice thing is that we're beginning to get to to know each other and and, and it's growing but, we create together yeah 
but I don't think we're being rushed as well. This is the other thing, you know. This uh, this whole business of, of grand design, which if you if you accept intelligence behind the universe, then there must be a grand design of some sorts, and and uh, it would be a a rather ridiculous, illogical situation to to awaken us in at the last minute and uh, just out of time, sort of thing. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it defeats the purpose of of why we're here, you know, to 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 essentially experience things in our particular meta frequency world that can be shared to beings on other meta frequency worlds as well. So we we do have a, an important role. Um, so, so Rory, you don't see as some people do that this is a time for a cataclysmic reset and a and a you know earth crisis at that level it sounds like you really see this as a time where we are in this accelerated process of learning and growing into spiritual consciousness to move into new understandings of ourselves of time of space Mm. be more galactic beings yeah yeah well a couple couple of things first of all people talk about a comet that came around and, and caused disaster back in the um, I forget the name of the it was it Younger Dryas. Younger Dryas. Well, well, comets are cyclic, but not until they hit Earth. So they don't come back after that again. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> but so, so for, for physical physical uh, changes, yes, we're going to see physical changes all the time, um, and and we're going to find the that the, there will be ejections from the sun, but that's not a problem because. By the time then we'll get ample information in, in advance, like we are gifted information in advance, and we'll be prepared. We'll, we'll know how to deal with it. Nature gives us both action and reaction, what Tesla says, and we'll be able to, oh, well, it's time to go underground right now. Oh, it's time to perhaps build a bunker. Or, oh, oh, it's, you know, it's time to build a boat maybe. You know, the, it will all get that in, in good time. Um, so, yes, there will be adversity, but the the, the the idea that mankind's wiped out is is is, is illogical. Um, so that that will happen. Um, but I think there's going to be something else to consider when you move epochs and when you when you when you transition through different times. You go these great cycles from group consciousness to individual consciousness to group consciousness. So the very laws of science will change. Yes. You look back at at seeing how some of these uh, uh, pre-megalithic sites with, you know, eight, nine hundred ton boulders were were moved around like they were Lego bricks. Well, this was at a time when when, when what could be done is something we can't fathom right now. It doesn't mean to say it wasn't, wasn't done by us or with the help of other people. But, you know, this is this is this is now a time we're going to be going into. Uh, Aquarius, where we're going to be able to dream up things and create things which are, you can't comprehend right now. Mm. So we'll be given challenges, we'll rise to them, and we'll overcome them. And it might be through energetics. If you, you already the, the hexagonal grid, uh, which I, I, I'm planning to go into that, but we know we we can move the hexagonal grid into a dome of protection. Mm-hmm. And we just need to know when we need to do that. And we know how to do this. And that's just one of the tricks we've learned through group meditation that we were taught a couple of years ago. So there are things that we can do, but we need practice. And and, and, and it's no good one group doing it. The group has to do it in the, to the, for, for that region and learn within themselves. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's, that's kind of like where my, my work is now leading, is to try and get people into groups. And to learn and study through groups, so you, you have shared dialogue and, and shared meditation, and, and uh, yeah. So tell us some of your upcoming classes in terms of that that people can be aware of. Um, well, I'm, I'm I've been running things called the Sacred Path modules uh, for for three three years now, and I've, I've got facilitators who've been through the modules who are now running the groups as well. This is all about learning how to be a prophet, to be a be part of a group, to, to, to recognize symbols, to interpret symbolism, to uh, maximize synchronicity. Uh, you, and, and it's learning from geniuses of the past, like Goethe, Steiner, and Jung. And uh, and and we look at uh, 12, 13, 14 of the universal prophecies around the world um, and look looking at how they can be reinterpreted 
and, and, and the natural ambiguity of symbolism that allows that and understanding how that works. So there's, 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 there's a good year's work of, of uh, material that groups can go through for discussion. So I'm looking to build the sacred plus school into to quite a large international school. So everybody can, so everybody who's done the, a level can then teach that level because it will be the fastest way. It's slow to begin with, but it'll be a fast way for lots of people to learn how to come together as a group. So if you work in a group and you meditate in a group that way, and it brings people together, especially people who aren't normally part of groups, everyone's a bit of an individual. And that's really important in a group. We don't want everyone the same. Um, so I'm really working on that, um, and I'm, I, I'm running things. Of course, at the moment, in, in uh, five seminars in London coming up in, in April and, and uh, June, July, which uh, yeah, do come along to those because uh, it's a it's a, a day seminar where we're going to go through some of the the intricacies of prophecies and, and symbolism and, and group meditation and and a practical workshop for for that. And they're, they're going to be replicable over the, the months and years to come so that uh, once you've done the modules and you're a facilitator, you can run these prop, prop, uh, workshops in your area as well. Um, so that that's happening then. Um, other things, if, if, and again, if you're looking at where these are going to be highlighted, go along to the Sacred Network, which is the, uh, the platform that was set up uh, about a year ago, which we just finished, just putting in place a, a second phase which has taken longer than many expected but that will be a platform where you can form a group or join a group and it's going to be much easier to to, 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 to interconnect uh, with other members on that group and it'll be a platform for um, training for facilitators to run modules there as well so you can pick up e easily people wanting to join groups so i'm very much involved in that uh, because that will be a driving force for the evolution of consciousness um what else? I'm, I'm, I'm doing a few other seminars as well in Dublin in August, where we're awakening Ireland. It's called the Emerald Awakening, and we we're going through looking at uh, all the major energy lines in Ireland and some amazing sites there. And we're going to be activating uh, some of those sites and the speakers from around Ireland and uh, who are talking about archaeological sites and, and various other things. That's, that's myths and legends. So that's going to be quite an exciting seminar. That's early August. All of it's in my newsletter coming out on the 1st of March, which you can get that, all my newsletters from the um, from my, my website, it's on a newsletter page. So there's, there's ample to read and to learn. But if you want to come along and, and support to the seminar, that, that's great, as, it, as there's always a chance to, to chat some more then, uh, which would be great, yeah. So. Don't worry. And I will list your uh, website below so people can access Thank you. But thank you so much for taking this time and sharing these updates to guide us in how we can be working with the energies of this time to be moving into this higher consciousness. So thank you. Thank you, Heather. It's just, it's just a small snapshot of what's happening. And there's, there's just so much more to come, I know, which is, which is why it's so exciting. Yeah, thank it's you very an, much. an exhilarating time to be here on planet Earth. <laughs> and it's exhilarating is one word i mean it's it's a bit like a, a roller coaster as well with all the waves of energy coming into that's right but i'm also just want to again express gratitude for this community as we're supporting each other in being in these shifts and really working together to be moving into this higher consciousness so blessings and love to all of you thank you very much